Now we're at phase three, call set refinement. This step varies greatly on what it is that you are wanting to identify at this step. So a lot of these tools here will be different based on what you're interested in. You can see here that GATK recommends a refining of genotypes. Then you need to annotate them. Uh, and then you evaluate your call set. So there are various tools out there that will help you refine uh, your genotypes. I'm not going to go into those, but I encourage you to look that up uh, if you need to go that route. At the end of the day, you really want to know um, what variant is causing the disease or diseases, or it could be multiple variants too. It doesn't have to be just one. So you need to annotate your VCF file. If you were to open up the, that VCF file that you just created, you would see that it's just full of uh, chromosomal locations, start, stop, the base that it was, and the reference, quality scores, things of that nature. There is no information whatsoever of, well, what gene did it fall under? What type of mutation? Was it missense? Was it a frame shift? Did you introduce a stop? None of that information is provided um, in these VCF files that were generated from the GATK pipeline. So you really need to come in and annotate your variants. Now, in my uh, document, I have a very archaic way of extracting out uh, from this VCF file that you just generated, um, pulling out information of autosomal recessive, de novo, X-linked, and so forth. Um, there are much, much better tools out there uh, than what I have listed here. Uh, the reason I have this very archaic set of tools, um, and there's some pitfalls when you run these that you're not going to always extract out all of the autosomal recessives or all of the de novos and so forth. Uh, the reason I was chose this route was is that this virtual machine I'm running on, um, I only set it to be two gigs of RAM. Um, and if you have more, great. You can put more RAM into it. But I didn't know what people's laptops would be using at that time. So uh, the limitations are based off of that. Plus, some of these annotation tool sets um, that can look at de novo, that can look at uh, recessiveness and dominance and all that. The databases behind the scenes are several hundred gigabytes in size. And again, um, uh, when I teach this course, the you know everyone has their laptops and not every laptop has several extra free hundred gigabytes of space. So I go this archaic route of extracting the variants first using GATK select variants tool and then um, running a, 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 a very simple tool set uh, called VCF tools to help me create a new VCF file based on uh, the uh, recessiveness or de novo or X-linked, things of that nature. Some tools I highly encourage you to learn, to take at this step, because in my instance, I have a child that's sick, uh, and I need to identify uh, the possible mutations, the recessive mutations, or even de novo mutations, and possibly X-linked, since this is a, a, a son of, of this mom and dad. I, there are better tools out there that can help me identify the recessiveness, the de novo, X-linked, and so forth. Uh, and one uh, tool that I highly recommend is called Gemini. Um, and actually, let me open up the website so you can see that. So Gemini is a very uh, powerful tool that allows you to input your variant file along with your pedigree file. And it comes in and it annotates um, everything based off of this dat these various databases here. So dbSNP is included, ClinVar, OMIM, KEG, Ensemble, 1,000 Genomes, CAD scores, Polyfin, SIF scores. Those are your functional impact scores, um, ENCODE, and so forth. You can even add your own list of uh, or your own databases from other locations. They have a very well-documented uh, manual that's 
gives you uh, ways of adding in your other databases. You will, in the end, have this MySQL database, which then allows you to come in and do very uh, simplistic to very complex queries based off of family studies, tumor normal, and cohort studies. And so here you can some come in and <clears throat> and say, find me everything that's autosomal recessive in this particular family or de novo. And it will have annotated everything here prior, so that way you have all of this information. So you could come in and say, find me all of the de novo mutations in the child that are not in the mom and the dad that have a um, high CAD score so that it, uh, along with um, rare uh, allele frequency from the exact uh, database, um, and out comes a smaller list of variants that you can then sift through, looking through the literature and such to see if any of those variants uh, might be the cause of the disease. Now, Gemini is free. They have a couple of other tools that they're working on to make this better. So I encourage you to, to sift through this. Um, another tool set that is great in annotating uh, your variants, the, the, what I call a naked VCF file, uh, which, like I said, doesn't have any information on the gene or the type of variant that occurred, um, is SNPF. Fairly simple to use, um, so I uh, encourage you to read those notes. And actually, my documentation, after, if you wanted to run the VCF tools and the select variants, you can do that on these files, but I encourage you to try um, using Gemini or something else to better uh, extract out the types of the, the uh, recessiveness or the dominance or the, the de novo type approaches. So use something like Gemini to do that. The effect on function I have here, um, I do have commands that you can try out on your sample once you get a VCF file that is looking at, like in this instance here, I'm looking at the autosomal recessive one uh, variant file, but at the end of the day, if I had used Gemini, I would have just had it look up autosomal recessive, and it would have given me a table with everything already annotated, so I wouldn't need to run SNPF. But if I didn't, can't run Gemini, or I don't have the resources to store all of their databases, then SNPF is a great resource that comes in and annotates uh, based on the reference genome that you're using. Another tool is Anovar. Anovar and SNPF go hand in hand. Uh, you will see some discrepancies between the two, but uh, but I've I've no colleagues of mine that love Anovar and hate SNPF and vice versa. Um, so it really is up to you of which one you prefer to use. Uh, of course, these are all free. There are some paid software tools out there like uh, Ingenuity Variant Analysis. You can upload your uh, variant-ready VCF file that you created from GATK and load that into Ingenuity or Cartagenia, Car sorry, Cartagenia um, from Agilent and you can create various pipelines to look at recessiveness, de novo, what type of mutations have occurred, the allele frequencies, how rare or common those variants are, the various functional impact scores. So you can use Ingenuity or you can use uh, Cartagenia, and there's several other ones too that, that are paid, but uh, my little slogan is free is for me, so I prefer the free stuff. So I've Gemini is a great one, SNPF, Anavar. There are some other ones out there, too, uh, but these are the ones that I'm most familiar with. Um, don't feel uh, worried that I'm not using your favorite tool. It's just that um, I have to pick one and, and live with it for a while. So <clears throat> until I find something better, um, I will continue to use Gemini uh, with SNPF in the background and the occasional Anavar. I've mentioned CAD scores. Um, don't want to go too much in depth here, but these are these functional impact scores. Uh, you can go out to the CAD website and load a very, very small VCF file, or you can download their large database um, and 
also um, call it from your local computer or your cluster. Uh, these just give you a functional impact score based on lethality. Um, if that variant was mutated, how lethal uh, would that mutation be? And so the higher the CAD scored number, uh, the more lethal it is. Uh, that's a, a wonderful filter to put into place at the end of the day um, to uh, sort of narrow the list down. No, it's not the best answer, but it's, it's, you've got to start somewhere. Uh, you'll be sifting through thousands of variants if you don't um, put in some sort of functional impact scores. There's DAN scores. There's uh, MCAP, which is only good on exomes uh, or exonic regions. Uh, so uh, those you need to uh, be aware of to sort of help you narrow your list of variants down, especially if you're trying to find variants in uh, patients. You've got to start somewhere. So the smaller the list, the better, and you can always work yourself back into the larger list. I mentioned IGV at the very beginning of this. Once you've got your alignment files, you can take those uh, BAM files, those BAM files. And so in this instance, you would take the recal.bam files that you created from the print read step and load those into IGV. That's my preference tool, but you could load it into UCSC. You could load it into IGB, SeqMonk. There's several others out there too. Um, just whatever one you want to run. My particular... Um, virtual machine I have, I have loaded in IGV, and when I want to run it, I have to run the command at command line this, uh, the period forward slash IGV.sh. Uh, keep the terminal open when you're running IGV. Um, if you have a Windows or a Mac machine, they have a simple uh, icon now that you double click and it opens it up, whereas here in, in uh, Ubuntu, or actually this is a CentOS uh, machine, you have to call it at term at the command line. Uh, but you would load in your BAM files. Here is a screen grab of a particular autosomal recessive mutation. So the father is here, the mother is here, and the son is here. And you'll notice that both the father and the mother are carrying a heterozygous mutation where the son has, that, uh, has the mutation as a homozygous mutation. And here is another one as well. A father has a heterozygous mutation at this location, the mother also as well, but the son has a homozygous, so autosomal recessive. So that, at the end of the day, when you have sifted through the output from Gemini or from some paid software uh, company uh, when to get your variants annotated, and to then filter on allele frequencies, CAD scores, polyfin, SIF scores, DAN scores, et cetera, you name it. However you feel comfortable filtering, uh, you, I like to go back and look at those uh, calls in IGV to make sure they look real. Um, uh, IGV, uh, GATK does a great job at you know removing all, all the false positives, but there are times where things do slip through. So at the end of this, I also wanted to mention there are other tools out there. Uh, of course, this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, there are so many tools that come out that um, I can't keep up with them all. Uh, the, uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of this recording, GATK version 4.0 just came out about a week or two ago, um, and I'm anxiously waiting to, or anxiously wanting to try it. I haven't really had a chance to really get into it much. Um, also, uh, a couple of months ago, Google released their deep variance tool. All of this is based off of a deep learning type of uh, knowledge. So uh, I'm interested in how these are going to work. Um, but from this recording, uh, we're still using uh, GAT. Uh, GATK version 3.7 or 6. But there are other aligners that are out there. Uh, BWA is not the only one, but Bowtie 2 is a good aligner. A lot of people like that one over BWA. I use BWA just because GATK is, recommends it, and they have worked a lot of their problems out through BWA. There are other variant callers out there besides GATK, so don't feel like you have to go through that umpteen million steps of <laughs> of every step to to get to a nicely recalibrated variant file. Uh, Freebase is another very great variant caller tool. I'll still use that one on occasion. SAM tools is very simplistic to, to use. Um, I, I don't use that one at all. I use it just to show some demonstration purposes of when you compare things. Uh, the effect on function 
I mentioned Gemini. Um, there is this uh, database called DBNSFFP, which SNPF and Anavar use that has some extra annotations to it. There's Anavar, CAD scores. All of those are free. Um, here are the two paid packages I had mentioned about that if you're wanting to call variants. Um, this is, uh, and you're willing to pay the money, uh, those are some resources there. There are a couple other paid resources out there, and there those are growing by the minute. Uh, I get an email a week from various companies wanting me to try out their uh, variant calling software. And, of course, all of it is very pricey at the end of the day. All right, well, that concludes uh, variant calling. I hope this has been very informative. Um, if you have questions, I'm sure you can reach out to me. Um, I will do my best to respond in a timely manner. So let me know um, any questions. If I need to elaborate on something further, you know, feel free to comment, um, and I might just add in an extra step or two of maybe explaining some of these further tools at the end that we couldn't really process through. Uh, maybe I will go from a virtual machine to a real machine, real computer, and run Gemini for you in another uh, recording. So with that, thank you for your time. Uh, and again, any questions, feel free to contact me. Thanks.